Wow. What a choice was in front of Joseph. This was not what he'd expected. I think it's safe for us to assume that although God did not choose Mary because she was any better than anyone else, um, she received grace from God to bear God's son. Still, uh, there's little doubt in my mind that Mary was amazing. A young girl, um, probably not much older than the kids in our school here, um, if that, who lived with her mom and dad, had been promised in an arranged marriage to Joseph. We don't know about Joseph's situation. Um, down through the centuries, there's been a tradition that he was an older widower, perhaps. Um, when I say an older widower, you know, maybe 30 or something. Um, but um, Joseph had undoubtedly expectations. The expectation that he would have a, a wonderful life with Mary as his wife. Um, in all his dealings with Mary and her family, he'd found them to be wonderful people, honest people, Mary to be a chaste and decent person. Um, all of his expectations were of normal. He thought things would be normal. I don't know if you've ever thought that things would be normal. You've probably figured out that they aren't, <laughs> ever. <laughs> but um, instead of what he expected, this wonderful, beautiful girl, this, this fine, upstanding, faithful daughter of Zion, turns up pregnant. She's pregnant. And there's one thing that Joseph knows. With certainty, he is not the father. That's the only thing that he can know with certainty. I don't know if you, you know this, but you are considered Jewish, even to this day, if your mother is Jewish. Right? Because that's the one thing that can be certain, is who your mother is. Nobody can prove who your father is, <laughs> but if your mother is Jewish, you're Jewish. So um, he knows that Mary's the mother, but he doesn't know who's the father. <sighs> Joseph jumps to a conclusion. Now, you and I know that it's not good to jump to conclusions. But in this case, you would think that this conclusion, well, he concludes that Mary has had sex with somebody besides him, outside of marriage, that, that Mary has committed adultery. He assumes that she has broken the commandment and committed adultery. Now, assuming things and jumping to conclusions, normally that's a bad thing. And I have to say that other than Joseph, whenever a similar situation has arisen, when a man who's supposed to marry a woman finds out she's pregnant and he knows he's not the father, in 100% of all the other cases in the history of the world, the hundreds or thousands or millions of cases, that assumption has been correct. Jumping to that conclusion was justified. So Joseph really is, is jumping to a conclusion with what should be 100% accuracy. He has, as we would say, every right to assume that Mary has been unfaithful to him. Now we're told that Joseph was a just man and unwilling to put Mary to shame. 
certainly he had the right to make a public big deal out of this, to confront her, to bring her in front of the people, to expose her to shame. Joseph had every right to do this. But he chooses personally that he's not going to do that thing. That he will privately write out the papers of divorce and break his relationship with Mary. Uh, this is, you know, something that, that's just the way Joseph is. It's a reflection of his, con his love and consideration for Mary um, that, um, you know, he's being kind and generous and wrong. 100% wrong. As you and I look at this story, you cannot fault Joseph ever. You cannot say, well, he shouldn't have done that, and he shouldn't have done that, and he shouldn't have done that. It, it just doesn't work. Mary has obviously been unfaithful to him. They are engaged to Mary, and in that culture, that meant not what it often means here, that you've chosen to live together and say that you're engaged. And when people say, have you set a date? You say, well, no, no, no not really. You know, that's not what we're talking about here. They were tied together in everything except the union of the flesh. And she's been unfaithful. And out of his kindness, he's going to be good to her and not make a federal case out of it. My goodness, what a great guy. And he's 100% wrong. And I want you to think about, what if Joseph had gone through with this? So, everything points to this is exactly what he should do, humanly speaking. And so let's just say that he does go through with this. He divorces Mary quietly. What does he lose? Well, he loses Mary. Now, unlike the Roman Catholics, we don't teach that Mary was sinless, but she was the mother of the Son of God. And Mary herself says, we'll talk about this on Sunday, that all generations will call her blessed. She commands uh, quite a bit of respect, um, even amongst Protestants, even amongst Lutherans, uh, not the same kind of worship that she sometimes gets amongst others, but he would lose Mary as his wife. And he would lose Jesus as his son. If you've ever raised a child, think about comparing the task of raising that with the opportunity to raise one that never sinned. Not once. Imagine that, would you? I know, you can't, can you? <laughs> Imagine, it just, just think of the, the major blow-ups between you and your child. And imagine that that didn't happen. I mean, you love your child already in spite of those things. But imagine if you didn't have to go through that. If the answer was always, yes, ma'am, yes, sir. Uh, yes, I'll do that. Thank you, please. Um, how can I help? Um, Joseph would lose Mary as his wife and Jesus as his son. If he does what comes normal, natural, that's what he loses. And he's about to do that. 
Joseph, in his kindness, is about to do that. And then God rescues him. God sends an angel in a dream. Says, Joseph, <laughs> don't be afraid to take Mary as your wife. Don't be afraid to do something that all your friends will say is really stupid. Don't be afraid to do something that goes beyond generosity and kindness. Don't be afraid to do this thing that every ounce of your being says should not be done. Don't be afraid. Because it's not what you think. It's not like every other case. That which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit, not from some other man. Mary has not been unfaithful to you. She's going to have a son. You will call him Jesus. For he will save his people from their sins. That is the meaning of the name Jesus. If Joseph had every right to do what he wanted to do, if there is no way that a human being can can second guess him and yet had he done it would have lost so much what does that mean about you and I as we are trying to decide what we should do we look at every angle we examine all the possibilities and no matter how wonderful we are, still we're, we're going to do the thing that seems will be best for us. Now that's ultimately what it was with Joseph. It seemed best for him to, you know, kind of just accept his losses and say, I thought she was a wonderful girl. I guess that was mistaken. I can't love her and provide a home for her child when she has done this to me. Okay. Um, if, if Joseph has all these reasons and it makes so much human sense and yet he's so wrong what does that mean for our choices? It means that whenever you and I introduce the question of what's in it for me, then we're probably headed down the wrong path. What you and I are called to be is so other-centered instead of self-centered. Joseph made the right choice only because he was rescued by God's holy angel. When God rescued Joseph through the agency of this angel in a dream, he was not making a promise that he would rescue us from all of our bad choices. I think instead he was saying, think again, and think again, until you have truly eliminated all of your selfishness from the choice making. Until you have really examined what it would mean to the other people that are involved, and what kind of sacrifice God might be calling for from you in this situation. You know, Joseph wouldn't have been the only one who lost 
had he gone through with this. Mary would have become a single mother. Jesus would not have had the influence of an earthly father in his life. Jesus, who is the son of the eternal father, Jesus, who along with his father, defines what fatherhood is all about and what sonship is all about, would not have had that relationship in his life. There was so much at stake here. Thank God that he rescued Joseph from being perfectly reasonable and rational and doing what would be best for himself. And as we thank God for that, does that tell us something about our choices into the future? In the name of Jesus, amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.